Hello, this is a presentation to try to explain what a performance measurement framework is and how that can inform priorities and growth. My name is Chad Hester. I'm an enterprise technical consultant and solutions architect. I've been a web developer for over 20 years, working with Drupal for over 12 years, an information architect and UX strategist for over 10 years, and I'm an advocate for open source software and user experience community participation and learning. So is this presentation for, your, for you? In it, we'll review how to use data to inform design strategies and priorities, how this develops into a growth engine, how to make adjustments and continue improvements, how we all work as a team with a common mission. So together, we want a framework to guide success. It's important to understand that we don't just want to turn wrenches, that reactive, instructive recipe. So when somebody asks us to turn wrenches, we might look at them like, why can't we participate? We want to learn how to grow together. So where do we start? Well, instead of reactive, we have a proactive growth hypothesis, and that is a performance measurement framework allows us to build more effective continuous improvements using data-driven learning as a team. So what does that look like? Well, we want to develop this performance measurement framework by first doing some core analysis and we'll review what's involved in that process. As we move forward, we identify key performance indicators and key system attributes to generate the performance measurement framework documentation and also a key performance indicator dashboard to monitor those sort of results. That pushes us into what is called the build, measure, learn cycle, otherwise known as the growth cycle. And in that cycle, which is inspired by the Lean Startup book, we can work together as a team to constantly improve whatever it is that we're building or responsible for refining. Eventually, there may be a valid reason to change strategy and we'll evaluate what might be involved in that. So directly from Lean Startup is this idea of growth engines. And there are different types of growth engines. For a viral growth engine, that is something that we can measure, and we'll take a look at those measurements in a moment, where things spread like a virus. And in that spreading, we look at the coefficients to see, is it being effective? Are we getting enough uh, you know, distribution of whatever it is that we're selling or providing? Now, a paid engine of growth is a little bit more common where you are using advertising or marketing. That is, you're trying to put money into something to get a greater return on your investment. And then lastly is the sticky engine of growth. That is, your customers are much more uh, engaged over the long term, you have great retention, and also spreads that word of mouth. So what does that look like in measurements? Well, there is the viral coefficient. It is a very direct measurement of the number of users um, and how many new users existing users tend to generate. And that is a measurable thing in a lot of systems. Paid engine of growth is about trying to compare the customer acquisition rate versus the customer churn rate. So you wanna measure two different measurements to see what the comparison is between the two. And then lastly is the sticky engine of growth. That is the lifetime value of a customer versus the cost per acquisition. So you want to measure both to see that one is doing better than the other to see if your growth is actually occurring. So these are things that can be your key performance indicators, which we'll discuss in a moment, but let's take a step aside. Why a performance measurement framework? Well, we want to have unified team goals. If we ask a group of people, either individually or in a focus group, what is success? How do you measure that? 
we're likely to get many different answers and they're not wrong answers. Those are things to certainly consider to evaluate, okay, is this the fundamental objective that we have for this service or product that we're selling? And these aren't so much the superficial vanity metrics. This is more uh, trying to get into the root cause analysis of why an organization exists, the purpose of their project, and whether or not it's being successful. So together, we want a measurable impact. How do we know we su we're succeeding? Well, this should not be an emotion. This should be something quantifiable. And it's also important as we measure these things that we're using that information along with other points of information to construct a model and an understanding. And that allows us to learn together. Learning together is very essential because we all have different things that we can bring to the table and we all have different ways that we can offer our perspective to effectively learn together, amplifying what it is that we can do. So what's involved in this performance measurement framework? Well, the first thing is key performance indicators. We'll evaluate how to, it is that we wanna define that. Now, for example, on a website, a common mistake that people make is focusing on, again, what we refer to as vanity metrics, page views, bounce rates. These are not good metrics of the success of a business. A website is just a vehicle for your business to do uh, business with your customers or your audience. And we have to think instead of the objectives of your business, your user needs. And how does that come together to inform what we would measure to be successful? So the moniker key is very important here. So key performance indicators are not just metrics that we can look at. There are plenty of metrics we can look at, but what are the key performance indicators? In addition to that, we have what are also referred to as key system attributes. That is the hypotheses of a system that we build, the characteristics of it, the affordances, if you will, that we believe will help improve those key performance indicators. So there's a direct relationship between what is and what we are trying to accomplish. And then lastly, we pull this all together into a performance measurement framework document. That is somewhat like a charter. This is the uh, rules for what we measure, how we measure it, what's responsible uh, from a data authority standpoint, and what sort of schedule we're looking at. So we'll take a look at that in a bit. And of course, this is to guide our growth. So if you have a service, you want to improve that. If you have a product, you want to improve that. And it's not so much random ideas, it's bringing order to that. So let's talk about the estimated effort of bringing this performance measurement framework into life. So really the initial effort is very research-based. What is the strategy? How do we talk to different stakeholders and decision makers, subject matter experts? Who knows the most about what it is that we're trying to accomplish and how it is that we want to sell this or advocate for this? That's roughly 20 hours. And you'll want to identify what this looks like with your team, measure that and update this expectation because as you sell this as a proactive growth effort, you have to understand what the recurring costs are versus the initial cost. So the initial cost to set this up is roughly about 20 hours. Now, the routine effort, because this is proactive, you typically will have about four hours a month that your team will take a look at measurements, come up with recommendations based on those measurements and put together a presentation that you offer either to your team as a whole, that is the decision makers who, who's choosing what it is that we're gonna do or your client. So who is involved? Well, clients on a small monthly retainer, you should probably just focus on monitoring key performance indicators. That's important to distinguish this difference because it can be somewhat costly to be proactive and that's okay. And then clients on a larger monthly retainer, that is you have sufficient budget to be monitoring this as well as reacting 
uh, to what it is that you learn from those measurements and other metrics. It's important to acknowledge that a larger monthly retainer can give you full access to that routine roundtable discussion. And that would be the performance measurement framework itself. And that's, that's our goal is to demonstrate greater value to clients or the team or whatever department you're responsible for, demonstrating that value in a way that starts to pay for itself. Put the money in, you get a greater return. That's the objective here is that proactivity. So stakeholders, of course, are very critical in the involvement of how it is that you measure and learn and what sort of decisions you might end up making about what course of action to take to try to make improvements. Subject matter experts are also very important to try to understand and give context to quantifiable data. The data itself can lead you into a narrative that might not necessarily be true or helpful. Uh, testing and live users, otherwise known as support users in the uh, design thinking, involving people who actually use a product or a service is critical to the success of that. Otherwise you're working in a vacuum or working blind. And of course, anybody that participates in monitoring the performance measurement framework that can be designers, developers, business analysts, that this is really a team that you identify for each performance measurement framework that you develop for whatever it is that you are measuring and trying to improve. So put that in the documentation so that way you know who to include in those things. So let's talk a bit about developing the performance measurement framework. What's involved? Well, first is an intake process. You need to develop an understanding of certain critical points of information to really inform how to define your performance measurement framework. And that starts with an evaluation of business needs and goals. That could be things like revenue streams, expenses, various uh, points that the business has identified what they believe they need and what they believe they would like to achieve. This could be how many incoming leads do we want? How many qualified leads do we want? How many sales do we want to close? How many times do we want somebody writing to Congress? This really is a broad stroke sort of thing and, and it's good to evaluate what already exists. We also want to be sensitive to user needs. We can't neglect the users of these services or products. And what sort of behavior might be involved? If there are various data sources that are responsible for things that we can measure, whether it's uh, things like Google Analytics, a CRM, other tools that already have an accumulation of data for your business or whatever it is that you're measuring, we want to consider those. And then we want to triage that information because now we need to start defining things. So the team would review some intake notes to try to put things together. And then after taking a look at some of those intake notes, it, it is kind of helpful to use a worksheet. And we'll take a look at a worksheet at the end of this presentation so we can put some visibility on it. For now, we'll talk mostly about the theory. We want to establish an understanding of what those business goals are. Do those business goals have targets? For, for example, a business may say, well, we have these sales that we're generating through this website and we want to hit a 20% profit mark with maybe a 25% profit stretch goal. We'll establish what those goals are together. Uh, you, you wanna be sensitive to what's already known versus what you might want to explore together. Conversion funnels are common thing that you'll want to take a look at as well. Sometimes uh, things like an application or website will participate in a conversion funnel, but there are plenty of other touch points that might uh, participate as well, like conversations, phone calls, emails, newsletters, et cetera. What are those conversion funnels? What do they look like? What is the step for awareness, consideration, and conversion? What's involved, who's involved? Critical pathways, that is uh, the, the very specific tasks that people are using your product or service for 
and what sort of steps they go through, how does that look? And just understanding what the current state is, or if you're designing a brand new system, what that might look like, because these are opportunities to really hone in and adjust these things to improve. Audience segments, who is this thing for? Understand how to define that to better empathize with those, those people. And that kind of informs how it is that you might want to measure and target things. User activities, what can people do just as a whole? And this could look like uh, use cases that you evaluate or user story mapping that you might do to try to map out what it is that a person can do with your service or product. And then from that, you want to derive as a team good examples of key performance indicators. That is the things that you can measure as well as good key system attributes that make an attempt to improve those key performance indicators. What are the characteristics of the system? The what, not the how, just the what. What can people do with this system? The affordances. And then once you go through those ideas as a team, try to draw that in a little bit. You wanna to try to target roughly about half a dozen, no more than half a dozen key performance indicators typically. Otherwise it starts to lose that idea of being key. Then it's just a whole collection of metrics. And it doesn't mean that you can't pay attention to other metrics when going through the learning process. It's just, these are the main things that we're focused on. And then you want to confirm what are supportive key system attributes that we really want to either start with or potentially just focus on and attribute to helping those key performance indicators. Once you have this information, you want to document this. This can be done on a whiteboard. This can be, be done in a Google Doc, but you wanna document this uh, and then discuss that before formalizing that into the key performance, uh, sorry, the performance measurement framework document. You start by reviewing those key performance indicators and key system attributes together. Make revisions if you need to and understand that key performance indicators influence the design of a system. Key system attributes are just hypotheses. I believe that this characteristic in a system will help this outcome. It's okay to be prepared to be wrong. In fact, we want to adopt the philosophy of fail early. Anyone who has ever said failure is not an option probably was not prepared to fail and when they did, it probably stung that much more. So we want to acknowledge that we are making certain assumptions and these are our hypotheses. Next is the actual document itself. This is kind of like a bill going through Congress. Once it's passed, it is law. It is the law of the team. It is, is the main thing that you focus around and it is updatable just like laws, you can update those to include different KPIs, updated KPIs, different ways of meeting together, that sort of thing. In this document, the way that you want to really structure it is uh, first identify the list of KPIs and how those KPIs are measured, what systems are involved. You want to really target what those KPIs are focused on. So for example, maybe I want to get um, 100 leads a month, 10 market qualified leads a month, and then at least one sale a month. I mean, that doesn't necessarily flush with all scenarios, but that's a simple example. And then what are your stretch goals? What if you're doing well? What is your next step in that? So it might be, you know, that 20% profit rate, but maybe it's a stretch goal of 25%. Again, can't stress this enough. Key system attributes are typically hypotheses, but if you have validated them, in other words, you have tested this characteristic and proven that it does help improve KPIs, then they are validated. Now, over the course of time, that may change and you may need to revalidate a key system attribute as assisting key performance indicators. Identify the round table participants. That is the group of people in your team, in your department, in your company, and within a client's company, if you're working with a client, that should participate on a monthly basis. And it's important to understand that while you're developing that finger on the pulse, that cadence with your team to uh, routinely 
measure things, it's okay to also break these measurements up into different types of perspectives. So let me explain. On a monthly basis, you're keeping your finger on the pulse, yes. You're taking a look at the measurements, seeing how they're doing. But remember, we're not trying to be reactive, we're trying to be proactive. So each month you're trying to actually restrain yourself from reacting instantly and changing the system, but rather understanding that there's a responsibility with what you want to do with that measurement. So a schedule can look more like every month you're meeting and presenting what those measurements have shown. Maybe you're making some recommendations, but then you might turn the corner a little bit and every quarter you might look back at the past three months and make recommendations for the next three months. Those are your short campaigns. Then maybe yearly, you're taking a look at the big bets, the big investments. What happened in the past year? What big initiatives do we want to put on the table for the next year? Now that cadence is truly up to you and your team with what makes sense for the growth of your system. Resources, of course, are a, a reality here, as well as how it is that you're trying to make changes. How fast are you trying to move? How slow are you trying to move? The faster you move, the greater the need for resources. So be sensitive to that. Define the objectives for those meetings. Make sure that it's in your document. And we'll take a look at an example of what that document looks like as well in a moment. So once you're meeting as a team, you need to have those measurements ready. So you need to prepare those measurements. First, configure those data sources. If they are not constantly accumulating data and if they are not calibrated properly, you may get inaccurate results. So you wanna make sure that they're measuring the correct thing. So configure those data sources. It could be helpful to put this sort of thing in a dashboard. For example, Google Data Studio. It's a great place to put a lot of your different KPI measurements and try not to overcomplicate it. This is something that the entire team and your client should very transparently see. This is your success or your fail failure. The thing that can not be reactive, but rather be the finger on the pulse. This is your vitals. Make sure to calibrate it for accuracy and clarity. If the numbers don't make sense to the whole team, consider how you might try to improve upon that. And that could be the first few months as you're monitoring these things. You're not trying to make changes immediately. You're trying to take a look at it and see, is there something that we should do? And then schedule any sort of data updates to make sure that you're prepared for those monthly meetings. Set up a presentation, make sure that the, the dashboard itself is current. If you can connect it to real-time data streams, in other words, integration points, then there's less work for you to have to update those sort of things. But if it's a manual copy of information, maybe you're accumulating information from multiple people or sources, it's okay to start off at that point and hopefully automate it in the future. So after you have your measurements ready to go, you want to routinely review those first as an internal team to make sure that you have uh, the measurements properly documented for review, and then what sort of recommendations you have. So schedule that recurring team presentation. Start off with that internal evaluation to make sure that presentation is ready. Prepare it as a team. And then from there, gather the measurements. Make sure to make a distinguish, uh, to distinguish observations from recommendations. It's important not to introduce bias. Just what, is, what are the numbers? Just say what they are. Don't say what you wanna do with them. Don't try to interpret them. Don't try to uh, persuade people or, or manipulate people. Just say what the numbers are. Resist that reaction. And then focus on the trends. Is there something that that, that data is telling you? If it's a single point, that's not a trend. If it's two points, that's hardly a trend. If it's three points, you're starting to see a trend try to focus on five or more points, which means you're probably going to have to look at the data for more than five months in a row before you start really seeing trends that you can rely upon. So after you take a look at your observations, that is a separate set of slides. You just put that there. You say, here are the facts. We're not judging it or talking about it yet. Recommendations come next. Then you take a look at those recommendations and recommendations can include various things. And here are a few examples. The first recommendation might be our measurements for those KPIs aren't necessarily calibrated or clear. 
So that might be one recommendation. And that's an easy thing to address on a month over month basis. So until you get it dialed in, you should restrain reaction. Another thing might be testing and validation of the things that you have built, those key system attributes. Are they fulfilling the value proposition, the hypothesis that your team made? Are they helping those KPIs? Are we seeing that trend? Well, let's test that and validate that with actual users and see what their thoughts are, not just speculate or make assumptions. Sometimes you don't have something built or you're exploring a way of trying to make an improvement. So what sort of research opportunities do we have? Maybe we want to integrate with a new system and we need to learn about the API, or maybe we need to uh, study an audience before trying to market to them. Those research opportunities need to have budgets, timelines, and be something that you're prepared to recommend, re recommend if you are trying to get approval for those recommendations. And then backlog recommendations. What can you build right now or improve that exists in the system? You know, it, maybe we found some, some issues with the usability of something. Maybe we want to improve accessibility. Maybe we want to add some new content or change some things in the system to be a little bit more dialed in. So what are those backlog recommendations? And then remember that you are trying through this process every single month, every single sprint to enter that build, measure, learn cycle. And that's this lower part of the graph that we looked at earlier. The top part is us building the performance measurement framework. The latter part is hint hitting that growth cycle, that build, measure, learn side of things. So from the PMF and the KPI dashboard, we can measure as a team and we can look at other metrics as well and take a look at that data. And from that data, we try to learn and then make recommendations. And from those recommendations are those various ideas that the team have. Now you're not gonna do everything. You're gonna to try to prioritize some of those things. And maybe some of those other ideas are something that drops down in the backlog a little bit lower for later consideration and investment. But at some point, something does get built or improved upon. And that is the product that you continue to measure as a team and then learn from and then build some more. And that's the build, measure, learn loop. Now you might wonder what happens if I want to target a new audience? Well, cohort analysis, things like that can certainly help qualify that as a, an option. What if our business strategy changes or we get bought out or you know, perhaps an audience segment isn't performing as well? Well, sometimes, and this is very infrequent, you want to measure things routinely and kind of have an apples to apples comparison month over month quarter over quarter, year over year, because otherwise, how are, you going to, how are you going to see trends if you're constantly changing what you're measuring? But sometimes there's a valid reason. Some simple examples go right back to what we opened with in the presentation, and that is maybe you have one growth engine, maybe it's the sticky uh, growth engine, and maybe you want to go viral, maybe you want to go paid. Those are very valid reasons to change the strategy go back through that top process, redefine your PMF, revise it as a team. And thankfully you already have a starting point for that. It should be faster when you have to pivot and you can pivot. And that change in strategy brings you back up to that core analysis and takes you across. So as a team, you want to constantly learn and practice this learning here today about the performance measurement framework was a form of that. Before this presentation, you may not have even known what that is, or, or maybe you knew parts and were uh, acquainted. So understand where you are in your process of learning about these things or learning about the system that you're developing and kind of put yourself there. Do you need to study more? Do you need to practice more? Do you have an interest in becoming a master of this type of a business approach to improving the products and services that you have. I myself, I try to get very involved in the UX community. I try to increase my business acumen. I try to understand how it is that we can be responsible for defining success, not from an emotional perspective, but really that, that accounting, that quantifiable and qualifiable set of measurements that we can use as a team to really guide our efforts. 
try to attend social events, participate in those events, study practice, discuss, present like what I'm doing here, and consider new tools and techniques, then repeat. Some resources to consider related to the PMF is the Lean Startup. If you haven't read it, Eric Reese does a great job with that. Uh, he, he does have a couple other books, certainly worth uh, taking a look at, uh, but I would definitely start with that. And that actually informed a great part of HubSpot certification for what's called growth-driven design, a fantastic way of operationalizing a lot of these things. And this was the inspiration of what the performance measurement framework is. A part of the growth-driven design cycle is making sure that you understand measurements and how to hit those continuous improvement cycles. And of course, those cycles align very well with sprints which is part of the agile practice, you know, prioritizing the backlog, making sure that you're cognizant of that. So if your team is not certified in something like Scrum or Kanban or those sort of agile practices, consider getting into that because that can really help you feel the, the momentum of constant improvements, not just these one-off sort of initiatives that kind of fleets and starts and then you stop paying attention until something goes wrong. So we'll take a look at some examples now. Uh, the first is the worksheet, and the second is the document. Sorry, the links are backwards, but <laughs> that's what happens sometimes. So the first is this document. I'll increase the size of this a little bit. You want to kind of go down the line here. So in this example, we have a movie theater. It's a pretty easy to recognize thing. So I have tabs for different things that we pay attention to. So first off is what are the income sources? So ticket sales, concession sales, private events. This should all add up to 100% for the amount. Uh, and it can be in dollars, it can be in percentages. It really depends on how it is that you're evaluating it. But it gives you a sense of what is, and this can change. You can have different targets, that's fine. But try to capture a snapshot of what currently is and just ballpark. This is just to get a sense of the business. Expenses are really important too, because if you can increase money in and decrease money out, then you net more. Being aware of money out is pretty important, especially for a lot of businesses. Just ballpark it. We're not trying to dig into things that are secret or private or, or anything like that. We're trying to just inform what are good KPIs to take a look at. And this could participate in that. Pay attention to any sort of conversion funnels that might be there and who participates in that. Understand what sort of goals may exist, you know, increasing profit, improving the attendance ratio, increasing concession sales, reducing concession costs. Know your audience, who's actually involved. Understand what sort of activities people may have. And this is that kind of loose use case, user story side of things. Just come up with the high level and try to prioritize them a little bit. Once you do that, you should be able to derive a handful of good KPIs. And you can highlight these and evaluate whether or not these are good ideas, what systems are involved, that sort of thing. And also go over some key system attributes. That is the affordances that perhaps a website or other things may offer in helping facilitate your business. Take a few notes about some of the ideas behind some of these principles. Now, if these are common standard best practices, eh, they might not necessarily need to even be set as key system attributes. It's debatable whether or not page response time is necessarily a good key system attribute in all cases. But just understand if you feel like this is something that may make or break the success of what it is that you're trying to improve, go ahead and include it. So that's the worksheet. And that's something that you can tailor to whatever it is that your needs are. Next is the document itself, the performance measurement framework. So here's an example. So that we start off with just a quick introduction. Here's what the purpose is. We list out the key performance indicators that are relevant to our business, our product, our service. We identify the system that is involved and we try to identify any goals. Now it is possible that we don't know the goal and that's okay. You can 
take a look at the measurements month over month and try to analyze the trends and then try to set goals after you've taken those measurements over a period of time and discuss them as a business. Definitely mention the stretch goals as well. So here's a good example of concession sales. We don't know it, so monitor for at least three months. After that section, we have the key system attributes. That is a list of validated um, hypotheses that we originally had. You know, These are things that are known in the industry. These are things that we have tested. And we have the hypothetical, You know, the things that have assumptions that we don't know whether or not it's actually true. So let's put it out there and test it. The next section is identifying who participates in the evaluation of these measurements to learn together as a team and then make recommendations and to evaluate those recommendations. Generating a, a measurement report is really nice. You might want to put a link to the KPI dashboard here if you have that. And then what is your measurement schedule? So in this example that we have here, we have three. We have a monthly review, just a finger on the pulse, not being reactive, just monitoring things. Quarterly, we take a look at the short-term strategies, what happened in the past three months, what sort of campaigns do we want in the next three months, and then yearly, what sort of big bets do we have? What is the long-term uh, strategy that we want to have for different initiatives based on the previous year? So that's the document, and this document should be something that's versioned and clearly indicate when it was last updated. Again, just like a bill through Congress that either gets passed or doesn't. And as a team, you want to be able to come back to this and update it as necessary. So this is written very specifically so, such that any of the participants can look at it, understand it, and feel like they have a sense of confidence and ownership over their participation. It takes practice. This is theoretical. We want to pilot test this especially in our business before fully and deeply committing to what it is and learn together, be prepared to fail, allow yourself that opportunity to fail. The measurements are there to support what that is to remove the re emotional reaction here. So thank you very much for listening to this presentation and watching uh, the progress through some of these example documents. If you have any feedback, certainly do let me know. My name is Chad Hester. You can get in touch with me, chadkhester at gmail.com or chadkhester on Twitter. Thank you very much for your time.